Hey guys, Forrest here from Fofo Astro. Um, I was out here in my workshop, and apologies for the change in scenery. I happen to be out here thinking about it, and it's a good quiet place to record. Um, but I was thinking about calibration frames with astrophotography, and how I think a lot of people uh, kind of overlook their importance. Now, this definitely isn't overlooked in the high end of astro. You see, most people use calibration frames at that very high end. But toward the low end, for people who are just getting started, I think a lot of people overlook the power of both repeated light frames and also calibration frames. So I want to talk a little bit about that today and why you might want to consider adding calibration frames into your workflow and why you really can see the benefit and kind of what it's going to do for you. Now, a couple quick disclaimers. Number one, if you are a user of calibration frames and you use darks, flats, and biases all the time, click away from this video. It's going to be very, very basic and you're not going to get a lot out of it. Number two, I'm going to make some simplifications. Um, I got my degree in astrophysics and I, I do know the technical reasons for biases and darks and flats, but I'm going to simplify things a little bit for people who are just getting started and want the basic intro. Okay, so here's how we're going to talk about we all know what lights are. A light frame is an image of the actual object and we like to shoot repeated light frames like 10, 20, 30, because every time we shoot an additional light frame, we're actually adding signal to our signal to noise ratio, meaning that as we continue to do that, continue to do that, as we shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and pile up all those light frames, we're getting a better picture of what the actual and better picture means that in two ways. We're getting a better picture or a better idea of what the actual information is there in the sky. Because as you repeatedly take measurements of the same thing, you start to beat down that inherent noise that's there in the image. So the more lights you shoot, the better signal to noise ratio you're gonna have. And that's just true, and that's a great thing about astrophotography, and there's, there's something to be said for just shooting repeated lights. The more you shoot, the better things are gonna be. Now, that gets us to calibration frames. I wanna talk about darks first. What darks are there for, a lot of people think darks are there to eliminate noise. And while that's true, actually repeated lights are going to improve your signal to noise ratio more than darks will. Darks are really there to get a picture of what the inherent dark current of your sensor is. And what dark current is, is that your sensor over time will basically take false measurements from heat. Essentially, as a sensor sits there, and light doesn't fall on it, it just takes false measurements. It reads light where there really isn't any light. And as you do that again and again and again, your sensor is going to do this repeatedly. It's going to do this in every single picture. And an image with the same ISO and same temperature and same basic settings as a light frame, if you leave the lens cap on, you're basically ensuring that you only get that dark information. So the way you shoot darks is, as soon as you're done with your lights, you leave your, all your settings the same, you put the lens cap on and you shoot some darks. And the thing with darks is you gotta be careful because darks are very temperature dependent. Remember, it's a picture of the dark current in your images and darks are super dependent on the temperature. So you wanna make sure that when you shoot your darks, when you put the lens cap on and you shoot some shots of your lens cap with all the same settings, that the temperature is roughly the same. Now, I was helping a guy on Instagram over the weekend. If you guys haven't followed me on Instagram, you should, because that's a great way to kind of message me. Um, I was chatting with a guy on Instagram who's super awesome. I linked his account down in, the, in my description. He's just getting started in astrophotography. And I told him about darks, and he was planning on shooting darks in the night that he was shooting his light frames. And I never do that because the thing with lights is you want to take advantage of your light frames and shoot them when it's clear. Darks can be taken any time. As long as you use the same settings and use the same temperature, you can shoot them whenever you want to. So I take really careful notes or I use the metadata of my files and I shoot all my darks on cloudy nights. As long as the temperature outside is the same, that's when I do it. Another time I'll shoot darks is when I go to bed. I'll take my camera, I'll put the lens cap on and I'll put it in the back seat of my car because generally my car is going to be about the same ambient temperature as the outside and I shoot my darks then. Either way, you don't really want to be waiting on your camera to shoot darks. They're pretty brainless. You just set your intervalometer to go and take pictures. You shoot a hundred of them, you keep the temperature the same and it'll help beat down that dark current. But thing to remember, it's not really gonna help with noise. Uh, it, it will with some type, with that type of noise, but the traditional noise that we think of, those variations, many, many, many light frames are what's gonna improve that, all right? So we've got lights, we've got darks. Second thing I wanna talk about is flats. Flats are there to fix any sort of optical variations you have in your images. 
And what I mean by that is if you have a lens that vignettes, think general photography. A lot of us have wide angle lenses that vignette quite a bit. This GoPro vignettes a little bit. If you have a lens that vignettes, that vignetting is gonna be consistent shot to shot to shot. And the thing is with general photography, we don't really run into times when vignetting is a make it or break it deal. Usually you have a little bit of vignetting, you pop into Lightroom, you take that amount slider in the post crop vignetting, you bring it up a little bit and you fixed it. The problem is with astrophotography, that vignetting is happening down at the noise floor level. And you think about with astro, we're sometimes trying to pull objects out that are one or two or five or 10 counts brighter than the noise floor. And so what we need to do, if you guys think about editing astro photos, one of the first things you do is you stretch, you stretch the image information. And that's because if you look at that histogram, you've got that tiny little spike of histogram information where all of the good useful stuff is and the whole rest of the histogram is the bright tail of the stars and the darkest black and what we need to do is take that little middle part of histogram the spike and we need to spread it out well the problem is that spreading adds contrast and adding contrast makes vignetting way more obvious so any sort of optical imperfection i.e vignetting or dust on your sensor or something like that is going to be very much exaggerated when you stretch the file. So recommendation is to shoot really good flat frames. Flats are basically pictures of the vignetting. You shoot those flat frames and the software can use those to correct for those optic optical kind of problems. Now, a couple quick things on flats. You can do in like a program like PixInsight, you can do a background extraction, either automatic or manually, and that will get you close, but really it's hard to replace a good taken, a well taken flat. Now, how do you shoot flats? Well, there's three different ways I would recommend. Way number one to shoot flats is to actually just in the morning, once the sun, actually right before the sun comes up, take a white t-shirt and stretch it over the front of your lens and rubber band it on the front of the lens. You wanna make sure it's very evenly stretched and you wanna make sure that the rubber band is down in a way that there's no creases or folds in the t-shirt and pick a clean t-shirt. And you wanna do this right before the sun comes up in the morning. You wanna point the camera toward the sky, a nice dawn sky, I think a nice blue sky before the sun comes up, uh, really before the sunset lighting has even kicked in, but you don't want there to be stars, just a nice blue sky. Point it up there. You're gonna to wanna to put your camera on aperture priority mode. So usually I've been shooting darks because I went to bed, I shot some darks, same settings. Take the lens cap off, put the T-shirt over the front objective of the lens, put my camera on the A mode or the AV mode if it's Canon, aperture priority, leave everything else the same. I point up at the sky and I go click, 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 and I shoot 20 or 30 flats. It's super, super easy. Don't have to change any settings. I just put it on aperture priority. Other option is if you wanna do them at night, you can buy a little tracing panel on Amazon. I've linked one down in the description. They're like 20 bucks. It's a very flat, illuminated surface. You can put your lens and put it down straight flat against that panel and you can put it on aperture priority mode again and shoot, 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 and take a bunch of pictures of that. The only advantage of that is it's just gonna be able to do it when you wanna do it versus having to wait for the dawn sky. I recommend the tracing panel. I think it makes things a little bit easier. It's a good improvement for 20 bucks. One thing I would recommend though, if you are gonna do the tracing panel, diffuse it a little bit more than what they basically give you. And what I mean by that is I sometimes will stretch a t-shirt over that panel or over the front of the lens and then use the tracing panel as my light source. Once you're in software, you can use the software to do its magic with those flats and you should be left with pretty nice, pretty flat images. Now, will you need to do background extraction maybe in PixInsight as well? You could down the line, but at least you're gonna be closer. All right, so lights, images of your object, more the better, it improves the signal to noise ratio. Darks are getting rid of your dark current, shoot them, same settings, same temperature as your lights, just put the lens cap on. Flats, flip over to aperture priority mode, take the lens cap off, t-shirt over the front or tracing panel, point at the dawn sky, you should be good to go. That leaves us with bias. And bias is another one of those things that it's like, kind of what, you know, what, what is that? Well, what bias is, is you guys, as soon as you click your shutter button, the first thing the camera does when you push that shutter button is it charges up basically the capacitor on each pixel. Every pixel on your sensor has a little capacitor. And that capacitor is, the charge on that capacitor is what decreases as more electrons get created by the photons slamming into that, that pixel. 
And the problem is, if you're charging up 20 million little capacitors, your camera doesn't charge each capacitor equally every single time. In fact, there's a lot of systematic differences across the sensor, depending on which pixel is which. And what I mean by that is one pixel might be charged to, I don't know, 1.2 volts, and the other one might be charged to 1.21 volts. And every time it's charged a little bit different than its neighbors. The problem is, if you think about it, you're still gonna have read noise and you're still gonna have other types of noise when this bias data gets read off the sensor. So it's not a perfect science, but the more bias images we can shoot, the better idea of the systematic variations that are present on the sensor we can generate. We can get a better idea of those systematic variations and that lets us then remove that from the pictures. It just makes, it, it, it makes things a little bit cleaner. Again, the more we can do, the better. And bias is so easy to do. All you gotta do for bias, Ideally, you want the temperature to be the same and you want the ISO to be the same. The other stuff doesn't matter, okay? So what you do is you leave your ISO the same, you make note of the temperature, make sure it equals your lights. And when I say temperature the same, I'm always referring to temperature the same as the lights that you generated, that you created. Make sure your temperature is the same, make sure your ISO is the same. You put the lens cap on and you set your shutter speed to the fastest possible shutter speed you can make. So an eight thousandth of a second, a four thousandth of a second, some cameras can do a 32 thousandth of a second. Fastest shutter speed you can. I like to put the camera on motor drive or uh, continuous shooting mode. So you hold down the button, it goes tick, 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 it shoots really fast because you gotta shoot a lot of these. Set all that up, lens cap on. I even usually put it like under a blanket. So it's totally covered up. No light can get in there. Cause you think about it, if we're trying to measure the initial voltage applied to each capacitor on our sensor. If any light hits that sensor at all, you've not gotten a value of the actual voltage applied to that sensor, the initial voltage, because that initial voltage is gonna go down as soon as a photon hits that sensor. So you wanna like bury that thing, like get it, get it covered up, lens caps on, it's dark, temperature's the same, ISO's the same, shutter speed's as fast as possible crack off 20, 30, 40 of those bias frames, and that's literally all you have to do. It's really easy. Bias is the easiest by far. It takes five minutes. It's super quick. So bias makes up for the initial voltage variations applied to the sensor. Flats make up for any sort of optical imperfections, vignetting, dust spots, things like that. Darks make up for dark current, which is the noise generated over time. And then multiple lights make up for the fact that there's noise in our images. And the more lights you shoot, the more better idea you're gonna have of what the actual signal is, the underlying signal that's hiding down there by the noise floor. So hopefully that made some sense. You guys, if you've never done this before and you've only ever shot one light frame or multiple light frames, try shooting some calibration frames. It's super easy. You can use a program called Deep Sky Stacker, which I've linked down in the description. It's free to do the stacking. It works on Mac or PC. I think natively it only works on, uh, Mac, but you can get, or sorry, PC, but you can get a little Mac workaround if you just Google uh, Deep Sky Stacker for Mac. Download that, give it a try. I think it will hugely improve your guys' images if you do it. And if you guys like this video, hit that like button. I appreciate it. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question, comment, concern, whatever it is, leave it in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. This is Forrest from Fofo Astro. You guys are awesome. Go shoot some Astro photos and I'll catch you guys in the next one.